HubSpot have launched something called um, Spotlight. There's like 100 plus new product updates for HubSpot. So we're going to be spending... We're not going to go ever every single 100, are we? Because like, I've got to um, go home at some point. HubSpot used for a long time. They did have CMS. Now CMS is kind of gone, right? We've got Content Hub to replace that. And they, they've got basically Marketing Hub, CMS, get rid of CMS, grab a couple from like Marketing Hub and put yeah. it together as Content Hub. Yeah. Every single one of our sales coaching clients, this comes up, like yeah. dealing with pricing objections. Now, now, the idea of dealing with pricing objections, there's a lot of different categories. And we're going to go over, I wanted to go over the hardest one. There's like when someone asks for a discount, that's slightly different. When someone says, hey, you're more expensive than your competitor, that's slightly different. And there's other ones. But this is the one that I believe is probably the hardest. And yep. it is essentially when um, someone says you're too expensive. Welcome to Inbound Bars. My name is Moby Sadiq. And it's a pleasure to be back on Inbound Buzz. How are you, Semi? Good man, good. How are you? Good, good. I hear uh, you were happy not to have me last time. Um, yeah, man. Me and, me and Linda had a blast in our last episode. So we actually thought about maybe getting you retired from the episodes of Inbound Buzz. I've got to listen back to that. I don't know what shit you guys are talking about. I'm going to listen back to that for sure. Uh, but look, it's great to be back. I was away in Pakistan for my brother's uh, wedding. And um, yeah, good to go. Let's talk about... What are we talking about today? We're not doing news buzz. We're doing something special today. All right, cool. So um, for uh, inbound news or buzz news. Um, so last week, HubSpot have launched something called um, Spotlight. There's like 100 plus new product updates for HubSpot. So we're going to be spending... We're not going to go ever every single 100, are we? Because like I've got to um, go home at some point. <laughs> we, we Look, it's completely up to our viewers. If they want to listen to my soft uh, voice for them to sleep in for the next 100 plus uh, updates, I'm happy to do that. That'll be another session. But no, we're going to go through the most highlighted options, right? Um, so few changes, uh, a few big changes, I would say. is Right. Uh, I categorize into three big components. Uh, number one is uh, Service Hub, um, the introduction of... Um, Content Hub, and then we've also got a uh, so for those that are not in America, but in 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 pretty much the rest of the world, we didn't have access to Commerce Hub. Now we've got access to Commerce Hub. So those are the three key highlights, right? Um, so for Service Hub, I'll just go quickly over it. Uh, they've introduced what we call Help Desk. So now it's a combination of inbox, shared inbox, and a ticketing service merged together. Before you could, you would have separate, and you have to like treat each. Yeah, one explain of those. that as an example because you tried to explain to me, and I didn't get it. So uh, you're gonna your shared inbox. So in, initially, you would have a shared inbox, and then you would have like some automation behind that would create a ticket, right? Now with the help desk feature, you embed your inbox straight into like the help desk. So now every single time. Uh, a email or some form of connected channel comes so in. So an email, and not everyone knows what an inbox would be in HubSpot. So an email or a form, live chat, form, live chat form. I think even Messenger. Yeah, I Facebook. Think. Yep. You got uh, WhatsApp Messenger as well so now. All of that comes in. All that comes automatically in. create a ticket. Yeah. So bef in in inbox feature was mostly used for sales, and sometimes you might use for like support. Sorry. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's for support inbox. Now that's like they made it clear that the differentiation between okay inbound um you know messages use uh you know help desk for outbound stuff like sales and all those you know inquiries and stuff you can use um inbox still to be able to cool. communicate with your clients so um yeah big change but it does solve a lot of problems right for clients now that i have to shuffle between inbox and ticketing and a whole bunch of stuff um so moving on that will also uh you know, advanced SLA is part of it, uh, integrated all AI features in there, like, um, you know, real time. Uh, so part of this service hub, you know, they call it reinvention. Um, the cool, cool part is if you've got a knowledge base in HubSpot and you've got um, a chat on your website of some sort, now what it does is instead of you, um, you know, before it would give you some article recommendations, it's gone beyond that. It reads your customer's inquiry. It, this I was waiting for. Yeah. It gives this is finally here. Yeah, this I was gives, waiting for. So it's like ChatGPT effectively, right, embedded into HubSpot so that it reads your knowledge base, it reads your customer inquiry, gives you a recommendation. So all the service rep person needs to do is just 
you know, review it and select. Right. So send. does this only work? So the, what the concept is, and I was like, we we could feel this was coming before they even said it because HubSpot has a bot and it has a knowledge base. And what essentially you're saying is someone could come in because and you can already do it on HubSpot's yeah, yeah. website, right? Yeah, now. absolutely. So you ask them a question and rather than giving you articles, it's having a conversation with you. Yeah. Now, my question is, and I don't know if you know this or it's too early, yeah. is we know we're big believers of three articles per week, turning your website into the best sales rep you ever have. And for example, our website's got hundreds of juicy yeah. articles on marketing. Could you do it in a way where someone comes online and they're like, uh, we might have like a, a, today we're talking about sales, right? A sales bot. Um, what should I do if I have a pricing objection? And then it will read the blog post and give them the answer. Or is it only for help desk articles? Um, really good question. Uh, I don't know the answer to it. You should have just said that. Right. Like, but there's there's like, because you can understand with HubSpot, there is a, it is pretty big, but you can use, you can use like ways around it. So, Going back to that, maybe you might not now be able to use it on um, blog posts, but you can use it on knowledge base. So if you had all information in knowledge base, then it would read the knowledge base article and yeah. turn it on your website. It's just a matter of licking it as a, you know, because you've got your tracking code, turn it on as a normal chat and you, you're good to go. Got you. Next so, time, next like time you, long, can, long, long you can just say next time you don't know, but that, um, no, no, I get it. <laughs> no, it makes sense. So essentially in theory, you should be able to, because it's articles be able to. and it's still early days, but yeah. that's the exciting stuff. Like that's yeah. why we talk about building content, right? Yeah. If you have, everyone talks about AI oh, and everyone talks about like having just, all this stuff, but if you don't have the content to back if, it up. If anyone wants to experience it now, I don't know if they notice, but if you do go to the help, function in HubSpot now, it does give you a custom recommended response for any help of their knowledge base articles, right? It goes, oh, look, you know, blah, blah, blah. And at the bottom, it does go, um, sorry, this is just a test. Were we able to answer your questions along, right. along the lines yeah. of that? Don't quote me. And then if if yes or no, I'm still, like, I'm still learning if, it, you know, if it's great, mm -hmm. yes or no, then, you know, contact my rep and or we can resolve it, blah, cool. blah, blah, right? All right so it does give, it does give some... We'll probably do a couple more and then we'll move on. Yeah. So the next uh, introduction is Content Hub. Now, this is uh, for those people that are um, HubSpot users for a long time. They did have CMS. Now CMS is kind of gone, right? We've got Content Hub in, in, to replace that. And they, they've got basically Marketing Hub, CMS, uh, get rid of CMS, grab a couple from like Marketing hub and put yeah. it together as content hub. Yeah. So new users won't give a shit, but existing users are going to be a little bit annoyed because like you just said, they're taking some things away from marketing yeah. hub and putting into this new package yeah. so they can yeah. sell some stuff. So, the, so the, new, the, the, the most important, I guess, components of the a marketing hub, they're removing away from marketing hub as per se. And like I, I hear the like I do understand the logic behind that because it was more related to like website building, like landing pages, websites. They're removing that from HubSpot, a marketing hub, and then and they're also removing blogging, right? So blogging, blogging, which is all website related Look, stuff. Look, no one gave a shit of... about blogging. That that was never really that great. But the landing pages, <laughs> the landing yeah. pages. Uh, look, I understand what they're doing. And I do think some, uh, like I'm not being sour grapes yeah, here. Yeah, I think yeah. some of these things are amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, you speak about Content Hub. Content Remix, that's, if we did a good, bad and ugly, right now Content Remix would be ugly. The oh, idea is yeah. you take a blog post, turn it into something. Yeah, right now it's, it's pretty crap, versions. but I'm not knocking it for that. I'm actually really, really excited because with the mistake we could make is judging them for how it operates today. Like this thing is going yeah. to get better. So I can't wait. So yeah. Content Hub itself, I think is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I think it's going to be really, really good for people who are already on HubSpot. Maybe they're medium or large yeah. enterprises and that's going to be great. But I will say like um, I, on behalf of our clients, I would personally be annoyed Well, you'd pull off landing pages from marketing because it was always an all in one. Well, so, right? just, so I think that's a yeah. bit, I think that's a bit just, chat, but it, that's a pure so, money grab. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But that did also introduce like uh, marketing plus, which has the, so within that purchase, you do have like content help plus marketing together, right? Yeah, for an extra fee. For an extra but, fee. No, it's good. It's right? really good. But like, let's yeah, be like, there's it's some amazing like, things. But let's be honest, yeah. we don't work for HubSpot, so we can call it out. We're HubSpot partners. <laughs> we love HubSpot. That one, guys, is a money grab. Yeah. But I'm really, really excited. There's another Dude, thing. The content hub is like is all riddled with AI, right? It's like intertwined with AI. That's the that's why they, I think, like I said, I understand the logic behind it. I agree. 
for our existing clients, I don't think it's going to affect them for a certain amount of time anyway, right? I think there's going to be a soft, soft launch. So just because you've got Marketing Hub now, it's not like, okay, tomorrow you can't use your landing pages. That's not how it mm. is. You know, there's going to be some yeah. form of transition. The the last one, and then we'll move off. The last yeah. one I want to talk about is um, that, because this is a real uh, cool thing, and I think it's free actually called Clip Creator. So we've spoken about tools like this on the show before. It won't be as good as those tools, but yeah. essentially like if you put in some text, it will turn it into a video, which yeah. is really, really cool. And the fact that it's free, it's a really good kind of value add. And Look, you know, to, su- to, sum- to summarize Content Hub, it's like you create content and manage your content within HubSpot. That's the whole, that's the premises of why they're doing it, right? Um, and lastly, we did talk about like uh, Commerce Hub. This was only available for... Uh, you know, US users and stuff. Now with their partnership with Stripe, now we get access to like, um, mm. you know, payment links, invoices. That's pretty cool. I know they're yeah. quite late, but like, you know, it's easier for, for example, um, you know, here's, here's my payment link and then you can purchase a product in my email straight away rather than like, you know, waiting a lot. So there's a lot of advantages and stuff in there that's come out. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, it's, it's kind of cool. We get to use that now. Cool. Moving on to Featured Buzz. Yeah, so Featured Buzz, right? This is something that comes up a lot. It's something I'm really excited about. Every single one of our sales coaching clients, this comes up, like yep. dealing with pricing objections. Now, the idea of dealing with pricing objections, there's a lot of different categories. And we're going to go over, I wanted to go over the hardest one. There's like when someone asks for a discount, that's slightly different. When someone says, hey, you're more expensive than your competitor, that's slightly different. And there's other ones. But This is the one that I believe is probably the hardest and it is essentially when um, someone says you're too expensive. So have you dealt with that in the past, Semi? Yeah, of course, man. And tell me, like, how have you dealt with it when someone's like, hey, you're more expensive than your competitor? Look. uh, And be honest, like, how have you dealt with it? In the the beginning, like, first of all, like, it does take you back. You're like, oh, you're too expensive. You're like, you you catches you off guard, you know, because, like, you you put so much energy and effort, especially a service-based business, you put energy and effort trying to understand their business and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And they drop that bombshell on you like it's- Catch you off guard. Catch you off guard. You don't know how to respond to it. And you probably definitely would have improved since then, but how were you typically responding? Because I'm trying to- Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to paint a picture on how most reps usually respond. I want to know if it's the same. Oh, look, the way it was um, like- so why, why do you think we're expensive? Yeah. So hey, Sammy, yeah. uh, why are you guys more expensive? Your competitor is yeah. like 3K cheaper. So, yeah. Just um, why do you think we're expensive? Like, you know, what's the reason? No, I'm mean? asking you. So what oh, would well, you that's, say? That's what, you know, that's what I would say. Or like, you know, w- w- like. But most people don't say that. Most people won't do that. So what most people will be, they go into like um, uh, defense mode. Defense mode. I was well, going to say Well, because we have right? the best servers. Well, so that's we have part the best... of it, right? Yeah. Like you would say, oh, you know, um, you know, why do you think we're expensive? Because X, Y, Z, like, we're, you know, we're, we're really good. We've got great customer service. We'll be able to pick up the phone calls. Like, you know, what else do you need? Right? We're going to do the best job. We're going to do whatever. the best job, right? That's the typical thing. Yeah. That is the typical thing. It's it's painful, man. It's painful to receive that question, for, especially for a salesperson. Oh, like, it depends if you're like a salesperson to solve a problem, right? Because if you're a problem solver as a salesperson, then it becomes really difficult to answer that question. Like I said, you did invest a fair bit of time and energy on trying to solve that person's problem and that I value you by saying. And that's why it know, throws people off track, it right? Does. But it's, that's, that, it's and helpful. I'm glad you mentioned that. Part of it is being prepared for that. We talk about this a lot, whether you have a coach or not, you need to be role-playing this stuff. Like if you want to take sales seriously, you need to be role-playing this stuff. And at least, even if you're a small business, I'd say at least once a fortnight. Yeah, That's not a lot to us. 100%. So like you said, it doesn't throw you off, right? Because like you can get so vested, you want to solve the problem, you think you've done it, you're so passionate, and then they do that. So today I actually want to share a talking track and we'll do a quick role-play with it as yep. well. But the first thing I want to talk about, and this, this might sound boring, but hopefully it makes sense to everyone, is you need to do a really solid discovery. Like there is no trick that you can give someone that is going to kind of convince them you've got to do the work so before we talk about the talking track you have to do a really really solid discovery and there's kind of three concepts that i want to talk about that make up that one is the compelling reason to buy the other is success factors and the third is using law of three now all of this will make sense but i want to start with an example and i remember uh sammy when we were looking over the show notes um, I was talking about cybersecurity and you're like, oh, look, that's a hard one. I'm like, look, let's definitely do that one then. 
yeah. right? Because you're right, it is a tricky one because it's a need. And the reason why I wanted to do cybersecurity, we recently had a, uh, a hack, we had a cyber threat at Rependers, and we had to engage a cybersecurity expert, yeah. right? And it's a, in a detailed thing. So essentially, the first thing to do would be to understand the compelling reason to buy. Now, if like the only way I could probably do this as an example, like, so say you're trying to buy cybersecurity products, yep. right? I might say to you, uh, you, so you're the customer, I'm the rep. Yep. I might say to you, Sammy, look, what's got you looking into cybersecurity today? Uh, look, man, we just got a, we got a hack a couple, couple of weeks ago and like, or well, a couple of days ago, it's like in our priority list at the moment. And so I'm looking for urgent help. Right. And tell me more. Yeah, man. Like it's, you know, it's got an, it's got a potential to impact our business. Um, you know, so I want to be kind of somewhat proactive or something. I need some help. Like mm -hmm. that's what I, that's what I know. Right. When you said potential to impact your business, is there a reason why you're talking to us now? Yeah. So we did get a cyber attack. One of our team members, you know, got, um, you know, hacked somehow. We don't know. Affected, not sure. your yeah, effect, affected our clients. Um, and so we want to be able to deal with this in a, in a way yeah, we, we, we'd have had to deal with this, man. Like, I'm not a – we're a marketing agency. We're, yeah. not a, we're not a cyber IT expert, you know what I mean? Like, cool. So it's technical I'll, for us. I'll pause it. So what I did there was essentially law of three. Yep. Now, most – and you and I were talking about this. This is one of those pain points, right? So I remember when we spoke to the cybersecurity expert. Firstly, my personality is I like to share. So I, I was like, they didn't have to law three with me. I'm like, da -da -da -da, it's impacting us, yeah, whatever, whatever, yeah, yeah. right? But we have to remember, not everyone is like that. I'm sure people listening to this who have dealt in sales, you ever have, you're speaking to a prospect and it's like poker face. Yeah. Like you can't read them. Like you've got no idea. Like they're yeah. not giving you much. And early on, I used to think, oh, that person's like an asshole. They don't like you. Gotta, you that's you gotta, just personality. You got to lean into it, right? You got to lean into like the reasons why. And it's, that it's an actual need for them to buy. And that's what law of three does. It probes, yeah. it probes, it probes. So um, I, when we practiced this before, you gave me something completely different. Now in this one, you gave me something different too. I know that uh, like the why now. So law of three isn't just, okay, tell me more, which I did use. Yeah. Anything else, it definitely is. Yeah. Law of three is like listening, active listening, and then trying to go down holes of pain points. Yeah. Because sales is all about, and I say this, it's like what they say in an American movie, right? What do they say in an American movie when a cop arrests someone? You have the right to defend silent. yourself. And yeah. the second thing they say is anything you say can will be used against you. That's what sales is about. I think that we, right? we I think we use it in Australia too, but it, it sales, I don't know. I've yeah. never been arrested. So if you believe it or not, no, I've never <laughs> been arrested, right? So the whole point is um we need to understand it's not it sounds manipulative, but it's actually not. Okay, yeah. Right? This is all gonna make sense later. There is no way you can build a value base because in the absence of value, people compare you on price unless you do this digging now. And success factors, I'll go over that one a little bit faster, but success factors essentially is what needs to be true. So literally I might say to you, look, Sammy, for you to select your cybersecurity vendor, what needs to be true, right? They need to, they need to be reliable, you know what I mean? They need to have, uh, they need to know what they're doing. They need, they need to give me results. Like ultimately they need to guarantee that I, this is not going to happen again because you're the expert. And I can use law of three again, right? Like in terms of the guarantee, I want to probe into that. Yeah. What does that mean for you? And then also, obviously, because I know if I'm a cybersecurity vendor, I may know my strengths, right? And most people don't compete on price. Like some people do, of course they do, but a lot of people don't, right? And I don't want to get into a pricing war. Yeah. So for me, I might kind of take you down the path of, and we won't do this part because we're going to role play yeah. later, is I might take you down the path of, okay, you want to guarantee and how important is it for you to get reliability? So notice that I'm asking questions, 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 questions. I'm not really pitching yet, right? I might then ask like, all right, cool. Then I start feeding in some things like, okay, cool. Well, how important it is for you to get something done, get it done quickly, would someone whatever. Feel, would someone feel like intrusive as a result of this? Like you're, you're asking me so many questions. Like Great question. Like what, what, like. Dude, I don't want to answer this question. Right, I'm, you know I'm so mean? glad like, you mentioned this. And we didn't we didn't plan this at all. So we are today we're just talking about the pricing thing, right? And I'm giving a little I think we've done the perfect discovery. So we'll link that in the show notes. Yeah. Um redpandas.com.au forward slash EP160, where I go over that. The first thing you mentioned a really good point, and that's come up in a lot of my sales coaching clients, is you need to vanguard that fact. 
So at the start, if I go back now, if I go back at the start of the yep. call, I would literally say to you, um, I would do my willing to walk away, yep. right, to lower your guard. So Semi, in this call, I want to understand where you guys are at in ter- terms of cybersecurity, where you're trying to get to, whether or not I can help or not. If I can, great, we can talk pricing, next steps, whatnot. And if not, I can point you in the right direction. I'm lowering your guard. I'm doing willing to walk away. For me to be able to make the best recommendations, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. And yeah, it's gotcha. only so... I can actually make the best recommendation for you. Does that sound like a plan? Depends on the question, right? But yeah, I yeah, get that. Yeah, I get right, that. Yeah, right? 100%. So you are giving me entry. And the other thing too, because I'm going over this part quite quickly, is someone might listen to this and do it, but you always need to wait for confirmation. I've heard reps get really, really scripty. Now you saw me, I do it. I don't need to read it anymore. Yeah. yeah. But in the start, I had to read it. And they'll, they'll do that and they'll be like, okay, let's get started. You need to wait for confirmation, yeah. right? I don't mean to be... Uh, crass here but you have to be like uh, a box of lifestyle condoms the logo <laughs> the slogan on the bo- box of lifestyle condoms is confirmation is our, the biggest turn on right yeah. again i don't mean to be get all like <laughs> sleazy or shit but the point i'm trying to make is you have to get confirmation that has to be your ah oh, yeah i got confirmation now i'm going to move on yeah, okay, so does that make sense yeah, yeah i get now, it now you won't now, get now, that now 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 you won't get that response, now you won't right? get that and i promise i remember I had but even th- if you do you can refer back to us saying look just sitting you know like we did have this conversation you need to give me but you won't get it you know i'm know telling I mean? you Sammy. you i've never seen it in hundreds of calls i've listened to you yeah. won't get it right if you get it it's because you didn't set it up properly yeah, yeah right yeah. Um, or maybe the person's a psychopath and you didn't wait for confirmation, but you won't get it. I had a client, a sales coaching client, where I remember I trained them on it and the next week I listened to their calls and he didn't vanguard questions and the guy said, "Uh, I don't want to be answering a marketing survey. And I said to him, I go, do you realize what you missed there? You missed the vanguard. That's why that happened. Yeah, but um, but no, let's move on, right? So yep. essentially, like we talked about, compelling reason, you get that, you probe, you get the success factors. And the success factors is kind of a law of three. It's digging a little bit deeper. And notice, I still haven't pitched yet what needs to be true. Another version of this could be, what are your expectations? Yep. So what are your expectations from your cybersecurity partner? Or what are your expectations from the ABC product? Yeah, Whatever it is. Then before we get to the next step is I would recap, all right? So I always recap like this. Here's what I'm hearing. It's important for you to have a reliable offshore, uh, uh, sorry, a cybersecurity partner that's onshore, that is reliable, that will guarantee your needs, that will be able to come back to you as soon as you need. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for example, has a really good audit trail or something. Like whatever yeah. the, whatever the yeah. shit was that you gave me, right? Guaranteed. You'll yeah. be like, yeah, yeah, cool. And it, then again, anything else. I still, I keep going, right? You probably yeah. say no, great, amazing. Then I can start pitching and I can skew my pitch to anything you say and can do will be used against you. Yeah. Then I can skew my pitch to that. And that's yeah. what I do. Then we can talk about pricing. So would you? The question is: Would you then drop pricing straight away, or would you like Vanguard? So then, by that point, firstly, two things. Well. Firstly, you know you'll know in that point whether you can help you the client can, or not. Of course, which normally, assuming you can, right? assuming you can. Yep. And then it's like, okay, cool, great, Semi. He, like, um, I, I believe we can help you. Yep. Because after my recap, right? Boom, boom, boom. Recap and then solution, essentially, yep, yep. right? So for something like yourself, and. Look, ranges, this is probably indifferent. Either you can give a range and give two options, but it's really good to give pricing at this point. Now, the key tip here is when you drop the pricing, you shut the F up. Because sales reps, we have this, or doesn't matter, sales, business owners, sales reps, we're all agreed. sales reps, right? Agreed, agreed. We have this tendency to be like, oh, send me, will be $10,000. And for that, we make sure, da, 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 justify, justify, justify. The more you talk, the lower your status goes. And you give the prospect time to come with a comeback. Now, this this is important because as a rep, it's important for you to get data and it's important for you to active listen. If you're talking over them, you're not going to listen if they have a hesitation with price. You will miss it. And I'll give you something that you can't work with. You know what just came to my mind as you were saying that? It's like now the, now the moment if you start talking after you've given the price, now they're looking for reasons to get out of that price, Right. So now that the tables have turned, so now they they're, they're saying, like, tell yeah. me tell me information so I can use use it against you. Right? In sales, that's, they're using against us. In right. sales, we get paid for yeses and nos. So if they're turned off by price, I need to know now because maybe I can dive into that and probe it. Yeah. But if I talk over them, you're right. I'm going to miss that. Yeah. So literally, what you would do, you would set up your value first. 
you know, for our solution, it's going to be boom, boom, boom. And you tailor it to what they said, what was important to them. Yeah. And for something like what you're looking for, you're looking at a range of between uh, 3000 and 6000 or 3000 or $4,000 per month. And then you shut the F up and then you wait yep. and you listen. You don't and you let them in. fill the air. Yeah. And you will know, like, I can't even, even tell you the words to look out for. You will just know. They might be like, uh, okay, cool. Let me think about that. Or like, Right away. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, that seems like it was within my ballpark. Yeah. You're waiting for them to fill the air. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but now let's let's actually now get to say so this is the thing, right? When we talk about this, people overlook that that part I just mentioned is the most important part. Absolutely. The script and the talking track I'm going to give next, it's going to have a very low success rate if you don't do this part first. Yeah. Right? And, and you have to practice this, right, like multiple times. Like you have to role play this multiple times in order to make sure that it doesn't happen because like you might forget about it and then until it becomes like a muscle memory, you know. So let's yeah. go. So yeah, let's talk about this, right? So this could be, again, end of the first call. This yep. could come up or sometimes this comes up a lot on a second call yep. where you're doing follow-ups and um, the prospect has had time to shop around, right? So what I want you to do here, Sammy, is literally sort of just start with like, look, I love you guys, but you guys are more expensive. Look, Mervis, thanks for giving me that price. Uh, dude, you guys are too expensive. So what do you mean by expensive? Tell me what that means. You guys are like like 20 to 30% more expensive than than what I what I think it should be worth. And what was your expectation of what a cybersecurity solution would cost you? Not that much. Not, not the price that you're giving me. What was it? Between mate, it's five to ten, five between five to six grand. Five to six grand and we're about yep. 30% more. Okay. So for between five and six, what you what were you expecting you would get? Getting what the service that you're providing, right. but obviously someone that's going to solve the solution, right? Right. And how many companies have you talked to that have been aligned with your thought process? We did speak to three companies. They did give us different ranges of solutions, right? But I think you're the only one that has asked questions for us to understand before we give a solution. What would you say, Semi, specifically in our package that you liked that was different to theirs? Discovery questions. Right. There was a fair bit, there was a fair bit of whys. Discovery questions. And, and why is that important, do you think, in this type of – and thanks for bearing with me, by the way, but why is that important in understanding what you need? Yeah, look, I think it's, uh, it, it, it's good because I feel like you guys understand – what I need. But again, you're too expensive, you know? Like- I get it. I get it. So would you say in terms of understanding your needs, um, how important is that to actually giving you the product and service that you need? Is it important, not important? Yeah, of course. I can't have like cybersecurity like, you know, through it again or getting hacked again. It's right. like costs a lot of money, so right? Impo- like, yeah. Okay. Of course, it's pretty important. So what it's I, a- okay, let me ask you a better question then. From a scale of zero to 10, zero being that we can't meet your needs at all. 10 being, yep, we can absolutely meet your needs in terms of understanding what you're looking for. Where would you rate us? Uh, right now, eight. But again, like it's the expensive. Provider. I get you. I get you. I get you. And what about the other providers? That will probably be around the six, six or seven. I know that will do it eventually. Yeah. But I might need to hold a bit of hand to kind of get there. I think, I don't know, because I'm, I am after like a cybersecurity expert. Like it's very niche, right? Um, right. But again, like my budget is that much. So look, it really depends on what you're looking for, right? You've mentioned this is really important for you to solve this, not get hacked again, make sure you don't lose hundreds of thousands of dollars with your customers. Um, the fact that, you know, it's important for you to understand, have a provider that's understood your needs and whatnot. Really, that's the decision you've got to make what's more important for you. Is it more important for you to, you know, get an okay job, someone who might get it, and uh, we'll, we'll solve your problem or to solve your problem completely. Yeah. That's the decision you've got to make. So let me hear it. So you're telling me that I've got to make this decision based on, um, based on the fact that this may not happen again and you can guarantee it. It's essentially based how on your solution. do you want to solve your problem or, or with a fair problem. degree of certainty yeah. or is absolute certainty the most important thing for you? Yeah, fair enough. Because you want an absolute guarantee that it won't happen again. So what was your, what was your fee again? <laughs> so essentially, essentially my question, you've got to think about really, if you had to think about it, what is more expensive? Yeah, I get you. Cost of not doing it, right? Yeah, cool. We'll into there. Yeah. And Samuel, I appreciate that because like you you gave me 
hard lines there, right? You didn't just, and by the way, that's how you should do role plays. Yeah. Like in the early days, you know, uh, maybe you're a little bit easier, but you never roll over and you never go too hard. Yeah. So that was really, really good. And because you and I didn't get a chance to do this. And what I, what, what you said something that took me down a path where you were talking about, um, we listened to your needs. We asked more discovery. Yeah. That doesn't always come up, right? But sometimes just the nature yeah. of you, you doing that, they will feel heard. Yeah. Like you guys are still expensive, but da, da, da. But you told me that you want a guarantee. You told me you want certainty. Yeah. And you've also told yeah, me that like the fact that you used it behind, you use it again, right? You use it against onto me. I way, use right? it against you in a nice way, yeah. <laughs> right? Like in a nice yeah. way. So that's where scaling works really yeah. well. But scaling will not work well if you haven't done all that stuff. You yeah. haven't understood their success factors, what's important. Yeah. Guarantee is really important. So how can you sit there, Mr. Customer, and tell me you're going to go with a six out of 10 yeah. when you want an absolute guarantee and you've told me we do it as an eight out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think just to kind of add to that as well, the Vanguard and the price before you reveal the price is probably like an You're absolute right. game changer in this circumstance too, because you just done a discovery. And if you were to tell me, Hey, Sammy, like just letting you know, we've done the discovery session with you. Like I understand your business right now before I give the price, just a few things heads up, right? We are going to be mo probably going to be most ex We're more, not the cheapest. Yeah. We're not the cheapest, right? Um, we're not X, Y, Z. We're not like, we're, we're not a small team, right? I've got, ex I've got experts in this area, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, now what happens is like I've get I get a more of an understanding of where you're gonna come from, and so in my mind I put a price, right? In my mind I'm like, okay, cool. Like when he says more expensive, it might be like maybe ten grand, and then when you come to me with like, okay, pricing ten grand, I'm like, okay, cool. Let's you do the deal. Prepared yeah, sure. yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. You, you know what I mean? Like, you've done the you've done everything. You've done yeah. the recap, and well, look, we're not Just gonna be more expensive, thing, right? Because da da da, and you link it to what they yeah, said. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. And then and then if and then if it does come out, oh like, you know, yeah, but you got yeah, you guys are still expensive. And then it's like it's like without saying I told you so, it's like you're told you so kind of conversation. Yeah. You know? And by the way, like if you kept going, like if you're like, um, look, it's still, you know, I look, I get all that, but you guys are still too expensive. Because notice I was still willing to walk away. I'm always willing to walk away. Yeah. Right. And the less I say like the more authority I'm going to have. If I start justifying myself, I'm going to lose my authority. I've done my job. I yeah. got you to say it. I got yeah. you to put the cards out. You know, I've done my job. You know, one of the things that, um, I don't know, we, we didn't really talk about this one, but one of the things that you told me, which was really valuable for me when, when I had my business was uh, time, is a, time is not a commodity, right? Your time is not a commodity, but money is, right? And just having that foundation set in your brain to go, okay, cool. Like mm. I want to be spending some time with this person. I'm going to be like, doing something X, Y, Z, especially for, yeah, it's valuable, right? So, yeah, you know, it's, it's like, let's put that in the perspective. You know, exactly, you exactly. And even if even if you had come back at the end and pushed back, I would have said, look, Semi, for us, like if you keep pushing, right, I'm not going to yeah. say the same thing. I might say something like, look, for us to do this at our highest level yep. with the best resources, the best product, everything else, this is how much it's yep. going to cost. For us to do it at that level that yeah. you want. Yeah, that's it. Or even, or even to be able to make the, you know, pick up your phone call when you call me without resentment, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. That's right. Because we feel ugly when we yeah, get this discount, so we don't want to do yeah. that. But look, we'll end it there. It's been a really good show, Sammy. Yep. It's good to be back. I know you'd rather have Linda here, but at least I'm back. And guys, uh, we'll join you again for another episode of Inbound Buzz. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks for listening to Inbound Buzz. Learn anything? Return the favor by spreading the word. Want to make your mark in digital? Need help with your digital strategy, inbound, and marketing automation efforts? Then visit redpandas.com.au and be sure to tune in next time for another Inbound Buzz hit.